The first video said data from a 1975 analysis on the Allende meteorite was the key to understanding the birth of the solar system when there was no helium with normal xenon. At that time, all primordial helium was with strange xenon that is still observed today in Jupiter and in carbon-rich inclusions of meteorites. Since this slide was first shown at the 1976 National Meeting of the American Geophysical Union in Washington, D.C., many new measurements have been found that first, normal XE1 was found without significant primordial helium in iron-rich inclusions of several meteorites, and second, strange XE2 was found with primordial helium in carbon-rich inclusions of diverse types of meteorites, including diamonds. In addition to this meteorite data, normal XE1 was observed in samples of Mars, another iron-rich planet like Earth, and strange XE2 was observed with primordial helium in the carbon-rich gaseous planet Jupiter. These measurements over the past 34 years have confirmed that the link of strange XE2 with primordial helium extended across microscopic distances of minerals and meteorites, and also across astronomical distances between planets. Dozens of measurements since 1976 confirmed that first, normal XE1 came from the central metal-rich region of the supernova debris. Second, strange XE2 came from the outer helium-rich region. Now look at the figure of supernova debris circling a supernova core on the right side of this slide and ask yourself, if the solar system formed that way, why is there a giant ball of hydrogen in the middle? Could iron and a supernova core be hiding inside this giant ball of hydrogen? That idea sounds absolutely absurd. This idea conflicts with everything we have been taught about the sun. Perhaps that is why several years of intrusive data from measurements on samples from the Apollo mission to the moon were required. Finally, Professor Manuel and Golden Huang wrote and published a peer-reviewed paper in 1983 showing that iron and a supernova core are indeed hiding inside the sun's hydrogen-rich surface. This slide shows that the top of the sun's atmosphere consists almost entirely of the lightest element, hydrogen, and the next lightest element, helium. The remaining 81 elements together make up less than 0.2% of the atoms at the top of the sun's atmosphere. But what's inside? This slide shows the chemical composition of the interior of the sun after correcting for mass fractionation. Mass fractionation refers to atoms that have been sorted by mass. Mass fractionation in the sun was experimentally observed, first, in isotopes that came from the top of the sun's atmosphere, and second, in abundances of atoms in the solar photosphere that were made by slow neutron capture, the S process of nucleosynthesis. We can't sample inside the sun, but measurements on the solar wind from the top of the sun's atmosphere revealed mass fractionated XE1 there. In fact, isotopes of all the elements in the solar wind are mass fractionated, as shown here. 72 different types of atoms in the sun's photosphere were made by slow neutron capture, the S process of nucleosynthesis. These S products also show the effects of mass fractionation, as seen earlier in isotopes of elements in the solar wind. This image shows the different kinds of xenon observed in the solar system, and the mass fractionated S products that are observed in the solar photosphere. Together, the experimental data presented here leaves no doubt that the Sun is mostly iron, just like rocky planets and ordinary meteorites. Finally, this clip will show NASA created running difference images of a solar flare and mass ejection from iron-rich rigid structures beneath the fluid solar photosphere on August 28, 2000. These images were recorded by the TRACE satellite using a filter that is sensitive to emissions from highly ionized iron-9 and iron-10. Mr. Michael Mozina a computer engineer in California discovered the surprising video in NASA files one evening in April of 2005. He described the event this way. That evening in April of 2005, all of my beliefs about the sun changed. In conclusion, from the data presented in this video, I have no doubt in my mind that the sun is comprised mostly of iron. In this next video, we will explain its source of nuclear energy.